Hello, I'm Tom. And I'm Claire. And, um, well, last night we went to uh, Cine Guernsey's screening of the 2011 film, Weekend. I think it's Just best to specify that it's uh, the 2011 one because there was a, another film from quite a while ago also called Weekend, um, directed by Andrew Haig, this one, though. And um, I guess... It falls into the, is it, what do we call it, is it gay cinema? It's gay cinema. Gay cinema. It there's nothing into. straight about this film. No, well, yes, that's very true. But, um, um, I'll just read a brief uh, summary about the film. After a drunken house party with his straight mates, Russell heads out to a gay club. Just before closing time, he picks up Glenn, but what's expected to be just one night stand becomes something else and something special. No, it's not too many spoilers in that either, which is always <laughs> helpful. Um, yeah, and anyway, it was, yeah, as I say, Cine Guernsey were screening it, and um, there was probably about 15 of us there watching it. Um, but I guess I shall hand over to you, because you kind of did a bit of an intro to it, and there's some, some more stuff I we're going to talk about. I did a bit of an intro, but I'm, I'm going to have to say that I did get a little bit emotional talking about gay cinema. And... I felt I just uh, I felt horrendously stupid because I, it's it's obviously something that's been part of my life for quite some time, but when you actually stand in front of people and start discussing when you came out, what happened very very briefly when you came out, and the fact that you had no one to talk to, and that gay film was was pretty much the only thing and connection you had, it's kind of like wow, I've really forgotten that massive emotional wave. Um, so what I wanted to try and talk about was literally how important gay cinema is to the gay community. Um, obviously I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone, I'm not speaking for the entire gay community, I'm just literally speaking on behalf of myself and probably through some of the people that I've met in the past and we've all had conversations about gay cinema and what we want to see in gay cinema, what we saw in gay cinema. Um, I actually had a conversation with someone the other day saying that I was going to see a gay film and I was really into gay cinema and they were like, what porn? And I just want to make it <laughs> clear that when I say gay cinema, gay films, I in no way mean that side of, of, of films. No, well, it's... But a lot of people still think of it and relate it straight away to sex rather than relationships. So that's a, a big... A big point from my friend. I started watching films with with gay content in in the nineties when I I I came out very late nineties and uh, very young, and had no one literally to speak to about it. I didn't come out because I was in a relationship. I didn't come out because I met somebody. I didn't come out because I had anything or anyone tell me, "Oh, I think you're gay" or something. I literally just came out because that was uh, something that I recognised in myself. So I, I didn't have any gay friends to speak to. I had very, very supportive friends who introduced me to um, gay places to go and people to meet um, and just being accepted in, in some form or another. But films were pretty much the biggest thing in, in my life that I could actually connect to um, at the time and find something that I could have any kind of, um, I could relate anything to. For example, this is one of my favourite films and favourite comics, but Tank Girl was a film that came out just before I literally came out, and it was a bi it was about a film about a bisexual, no, post-apocalyptic world, and a girl who was bisexual, who had a, a best friend, but also had a boyfriend who was half kangaroo and half dog. And that is really stupid, but that's the only thing I could connect to at the time. I think I, I bought about six pairs of combats <laughs> and literally walked around in combats and combats and tank tops. And that's that was my identity for a while. And the only way that I actually knew how I maybe I should be like this, because that was the only person I, I could relate to. And the only gay scene or the kind of gay content was the fact that she kissed... Uh, jet girl to get another man off of her because he was bothering her but that's like it's not even a gay film 
but that was the only thing I could actually relate to. And so there was another film as well. I don't. It's kind of a bit. It's not a very popular film, but it's a film called Higher Learning. Um, I think it's from the makers of um, Boys in the Hood. It's about um, a college. Uh, people from all different walks of life encounter racial tension, rape, responsibility, the meaning of an education on a university campus. There was a lot of gay content in there, and it was based around two girls. I think after I watched that film, and she was trying to explain to the other girl that it's actually okay to like another girl, or even just to experiment to see if you like somebody, obviously with two very consenting adults, um, not someone who doesn't want to be experimented on. And... Uh, yeah, those two films were like my big, they were like my world for a little bit because those were my introductions to, even though that none of them are gay films, but they had gay content. And, but then after after that, after watching some really, really shoddy 90s gay films that were really, really bad, I then started to look at, uh, I think it was a film called If, uh, which was set, it's, it's a 1968 film. Um, it's set in um, just England. I don't think it's it's actually um, said where it's set. But it had Malcolm McDowell, and who is also in Tank Girl. May I just add, oh, he's he is, the, isn't he? the, the guy the in Tank guy, Girl. Isn't he? So Malcolm McDowell yeah. is responsible for, <laughs> for a lot of things. But it's it's once again, this isn't a film about um, gays. It's about um, non-conformists who return back to school. Um, they're per persecuted by the whips, who are the senior boys, um, given authority as prefects over the juniors. And uh, they're made to run errands and make tea and generally act like unpaid servants. And they were called scum. Um, and it, it's an old tradition called fagging. Yeah. I don't know whether... Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's still... I don't know if it still happens. I think I it's, to... it's still it's something that you sort of, I hear a lot about of through things like... Um, every week on Have I Got News For You, it yeah. seems Ian Hislop and whoever the public school boy they've got presenting the programme seems to talk about at some point. But, yeah, so... It, it's just... I think it's just a tradition... In a lot of British schools, I don't yeah. know whether it's anywhere. I know. Else. I think Eton is the one that sort of nowadays <laughs> gets particularly named as being the place where you have your fag if you're a prefect or whatever it is. Wow! They even warm the toilet seat up for you. Yeah, they make you sit all on the sorts seat. of it's interesting kind of things. Weird. Um, <laughs> and so basically, the, the film is about these people who um, I think it's uh, it, well, it's originally called the Crusades. This film, but they stand up, and literally the end of the film is pure and utter carnage because they just shoot people as they come out of the church. And one of the reasons why I really, in, really thought, wow, this film's quite cool, is because in 1968, one of the characters in there, in there was was gay. There was two of them. You didn't see anything. You didn't see any relationship of any sort. You just saw them lying in bed together, um, sleeping, um, and you saw them sharing a cigarette in the armory. Is that right? The armory where you keep guns? Yes. Really in, in, in the armory. And that's all you needed. You didn't need anything else. It was the looks they gave each other of, I understand that you're like me, they had no kind of intimate relationship. They just had an understanding. And they were the, t the two who were part of the Crusades at the end. And I just, I really, I really thought that story, like a lot of gay people do, I think, is they look a little bit more into situations than people who aren't going through what they're going through. So you start to build up your own story. What happened to them? Did they remain friends? And did, did the other one give them advice? There's a lot of untold story, a lot of subtext. And I think that's when you're gay and you don't have anyone to speak to and you don't know what to do, you look at films and you look for the subtext. Um, even in, in straight films, you like The Graduate, that's one of my favourite favorite films of all time. And I, in my head, I, I thought, OK, what would happen if it was two women or two men? Would, would the same film, would it be the same film or would they concentrate on different issues? That's that's the part of gay film and really of a film I'm really interested in when it comes to gay cinema is like how much does the story change if it's the same sex? The Killing of Sister George, uh, which was directed by Robert Aldrich, um, starred Beryl Reed, Susanna York, and Coral Brown. Um, it's it's basically George lives with her lover uh, Childie, who plays a cheerful district nurse in a BBC soap opera. 
However, her character is to be killed off, and George realises that the only other job she can get is the voice of a cow in a children's TV programme. Her life begins to fall apart as Charlie has, Charlie has an affair with a predatory TV producer, which is another lady. Things haven't been easy for you lately, have they? Life's been impossible. She's been hell. You've no idea. I thought as much. When she gets angry or nervous or something, she has to take it out on someone. Who do you think gets the brunt? Yours truly. Has she been drinking a lot recently? Some nights it's terrible. I just don't know what to do with her. Oh. I'm surprised you put up with it. Well, we have been together for a very long time. Besides, I... I don't really have anywhere else to go. I mean, nothing else to do. Oh, come now. Surely there must be lots of openings for a girl with your qualifications. Well, we shall have to have another talk about that. Why don't you give me a call at the BBC? May I? Really? Um, it's a really, really cool film for 1968. Because not only is it based around, like, in the middle of a relationship where it's all going wrong, there's no coming out. Like this woman, she's like a she's a BBC film um, BBC female program director, who told George of her cancelled part and also steals her girlfriend. And this is in 1968, and there is this scene, and I could not believe the scene when I saw it, of this predatory lesbian stripping this girl on her bed. And kissing her on her breasts. Can I say breasts? And it's just like, this is 1968. And there's like stuff like this going on. Because of this, it was released as an X rating in the States. Which meant that they had limited marketing. Mm. Which meant that it wasn't on a massive release. Because of this one tiny scene. England were like, yeah, this is cool. We've got the BBC backing us. We've got everyone backing us. America were like, no. So this guy who um, wrote the... Um, who directed the film, because it was originally a play uh, from 1964, he, he basically had to spend a large amount of money battling um, the rating. Uh, but his lawsuit was dismissed and the film literally died at the box office. Mm -hmm. But it is a complete classic film for any anyone who wants to see a classic gay film in the ni in, from 1968. Because this is before Stonewall in America. Yeah. And it's just England were far ahead, I think, of showing any in some aspects, pure so. gay stuff. Yeah. Just going back to like um, when I was coming out. Um, in, I think it was 1997, 98, Ellen came out. What do you think I'm trying to say? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say it again and be wrong. No, you're not wrong. You're right. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, this is, this is so hard, but I, 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 I think I've realized that I am, I can't even say the word. Why can't I say the word? I mean, why can't I just say... I mean, what is wrong? That why, why do I have to be so ashamed? I mean, why can't I just say the truth? I mean, be who I am. I'm 35 years old. I'm so afraid to tell people. I mean, I just... Susan, I'm gay. Um, and Channel 4 did this huge, huge um, film, gay film night. It's like the whole of the night was about gay film. It was called Coming Out Night in the UK, Saturday, April 25th, 1998 on Channel 4. And I'm just going to read through the list because I, I literally taped the whole night and watched the whole night. I was just flabbergasted. Um, high five on the word flabbergast, by the way. Yeah. Um, Good work. So 9 o'clock we had the Coming Out Party, it was like interviews. 9 5 to 10 o'clock was the real Ellen story. At this time she was dating Anne Hache. Oh, yeah. um, and they said, well, I'm not going to go into that. Um, so 10 o'clock to 10.05 was, was another party interviewing celebs who were hanger-ons, who wanted to be cool and stuff, which is fine. <laughs> uh, 10.05 to 11 was the puppy episode, which was Ellen's coming out story. 
and then 11 to 11.20 was a beginner's guide to coming out. And it's just like, Channel 4 are actually doing something in 1998 called The Beginner's Guide to Coming Out. I was like, where was this in my education at school? <laughs> I didn't see that brochure. So 11.20 to 12.20 was the Staying In show, which was like a comic quiz. Then 12 to 12.20 uh, 12 to 2.15 was the Celluloid Closet, famous documentary. Uh, 2.15 to 2.25 uh, was A Friend of Dorothy. Um, I think that was a really, really sweet film about a, um, a really young boy who tried to commit suicide um, but ended up in hospital and one of the nurses was a gay man and said, oh, it's all right, you don't need to worry about anything. Um, so then 2.55 to 3.30 is Dottie Gets Spanked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so 3.30 to 3.55 was a film called Trevor. And then 3.55 to 5.40 a.m. was a film called Thin Ice, and it, that was a, a lesbian film about people entering the Gay Olympics, I think. It's a fairly full-on night of TV for Channel 4. It was a, even, yeah. even Channel 4, really. It was really... Re Channel 4 are actually really good at showing mm. gay content. And not just gay, like, when I say gay, I don't just mean gays and lesbians, I mean also transgenders as well, because we've just had that summer thing. That yeah, um, my um, summer of transsexual things. My transgender summer or something. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Which is good. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is my introduction to the cellular closet. And this is when I really got into um, films and understanding. Because I think when you come out, you want to know what you're coming into, if mm. that makes sense. So you, want, you don't get to learn the history of... Um, you don't get to learn any gay history at school. But the celluloid closet gave me really good insight into where we'd actually come from. Because one of the biggest things I was wondering is why everyone's having a party for American coming out. And I didn't really kind of get it at the time because I think I was a bit naive and a bit young. But I thought, why are they all celebrating the fact that someone's just announced they're gay? Yeah. And why is the whole night of film? But then watching the celluloid closet, I actually understood where we've actually come from. And it's just... Uh, the, the, from the censorship, so 1930s, there was a massive censorship laws, um, and it said basically that there was to be no sexual perversion or any infer inference. Is that why the word inference? Inference, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> um, it stated that there was to be no sexual perversion or, or any inference to it. Um, it didn't stop any presence of lesbian and gay characters in films, but it it obviously stopped anything that could be seemed as um, sexual content and that could also be uh, an intimate uh, moment not, ne not necessarily a sexual intimate uh, intimacy um, during the 50s uh, obviously when the television was invented the production code started to fade because Hollywood needed to offer the public something that they couldn't get on television uh, because that in itself was even more restricted than censorship code. And the studios also had no way of keeping foreign films out either, and foreign films were not bound by the production code. And there was British films such as uh, A Taste of Honey, which was in 1961, mm -hmm. The Leather Boys, which is 1963, and a film called Victim, which was 1961. Um, these all cha uh, challenged uh, traditional gender roles and openly confronted prejudices against homosexuals. Uh, which were all in clear violation of the Hollywood production code. And in um, keeping with the changes in society, sexual content would have previously been banned by the code, were being retained. And then what happened was, was independent art houses kicked in, and they would show the films created by people such as Andy Warhol and others working outside of the studio system. So we had a real sense of independent film, were making what they wanted to make, they didn't have to go through any production code. They didn't have to go through any studios because people were providing the venues for them to be seen in. I guess um, with Taste of Honey, that's one of the ones that I've seen that you've mentioned. And um, the character in that, I suppose it is the, the first time in sort of mainstream or semi-mainstream British film that there had been a, a gay character appeared, even though at no point does anyone say he is gay or anything like that. But um, And it's still a sort of stereotype character in some ways, but it's interesting to see how he is portrayed as just a character. He's just an, another character in it, which you'd never have seen in a Hollywood film at that point 
yeah. in, in any sense. It wouldn't even have been mentioned. Like you're saying, um, I seem to remember he works in a shoe shop or something like that, which is, you know, obviously quite a, well, that's a, a bit of a stereotype by today's standards, but it's getting something in there which hadn't been seen before, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's quite exciting to see new characters uh, come in, especially with in independent films. They you started to see a whole range of of, of different situations, actions, and mm. and di- dialogue. And once again, I think is it sub a lot of subtext in that yeah. in that film. I think um, one one of the big things that I really want to mention is um, is Stonewall, um, and I. What I found really interesting in that film mm. that we watched was the fact that he mentioned the Americans were actually doing something and the British were yeah. busy, what was it, tying their shoelaces or something yeah. like crazy. it was definitely a, a, a reference in, it was, in Weekend it was, to that kind yeah. of, the difference between how American, as it was the word, pride? Gay rights. Oh, yeah, gay rights worked and British didn't work almost was what was, what was said, but yeah. But he was. I think he was referring to uh, Stonewall. But um, just just to recap, what Stone Stonewall was is in New in New York, uh, nineteen sixty nine. It was uh, June the twenty eighth um, at the Stonewall Inn, hence why it's called Stonewall. Is a, a series of spontaneous protests and demonstrations against a police raid took place. Um, this is kind of like if there was t- um, a Google Maps of of gay history this would be one of the massive uh, drops of the pin where gay rights movements started um it's literally people who had had enough and the gay community fought back um and it it, it created gay rights on literally a, a global scale and in june the 28th 1970 was the first gay pride marches and it took place in los angeles chicago and new york commemorating the anniversary of the riots and now as we know and as the the whole world knows today is, is Pride, Gay Pride. Um, and it's always held at the end of June, or as close to the end of June, to mark the occasion of Stonewall. Excuse me, I'm going <laughs> to... I've swallowed my tea, but... Um, so there's a qu- quite a lot, a lot of documentaries based around Stonewall. There's a film called Before Stonewall, and there's a film called After Stonewall, which also links me to two websites um, that are very... Um, big on gay arts and one of them is called After Ellen and one of them is called After Elton After Ellen.com and After Elton.com and these are two websites that will, if there's any gay film you want to see, if there's any gay anything gay to do with the arts is basically on these websites obviously one is for guys and one is for girls Um, I want want to speak really quickly about documentary scene as we just talked about uh, Stonewall is that it, it's been a vital part of gay cinema because without these, millions of people would have never seen the truth or actually heard about any of the events that have happened. They've, they've helped shape the communities and the politics we have today because they're based about real people telling real stories. And it's the one thing that you don't really get at school or when you're growing up or is that these people have been through um, situations and for them to tell you their story... It kind of gives you a little bit of hope that an understanding of what what's actually happened and how they've overcome. And then, yeah, and since independent films and funding has been there, people they will bypass the the large studios because there are places to see them. And now with the obviously with the invention of technology, you've got YouTube, you've got uh, Vimeo, you've Facebook, Twitter. You can order stuff online. You've got uh, online distribution of films. But a lot of a lot of these documentaries provide screenwriters and um, directors with ideas and research into the films that they want to show. And just to give give an example, um, is at the moment there's, there's, there seems to be quite a lot of documentaries about families, uh, same sex families having child like having children. Um, and I think it was a couple of years ago that there's a film called The Kids Are All Right. Um, which is an exploration into a lesbian relationship uh, where one, uh, spoiler alert by the way, where one has an affair with their sperm donor of their children. Um, and there, it's kind of like a continuation of a film or a section of a film called If These Wars Could Talk Too, which released, was released in 2000. It, was, it had three stories within one film and one of the stories 
was about a couple trying to get pregnant, uh, which starred Sharon Stone and Ellen DeGeneres. And then watching the kids all right was kind of like an exploration um, or kind of, kind of like um, a capture in time of what happens after you've had kids. Uh, and what happens, how, are the, how is the relationship going, how are the kids, uh, which I think is a really clever type title because immediately the kids are all right they're going to put the kids first no matter what they go through and there's a there is a massive um there is an an affair that happens with the sperm donor and to see what happens to the relationship um and how they just the beginnings of how they deal with it but by watching this film um and watching the documentaries it kind of gives a really good indication that society has moved on um and films are actually presenting real life. Um, and I think this is where this film that we watched was really, really powerful. Because mm. it was, watching The weekend. Um, it was as if you were there, um, partaking in this really beautiful story. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's the thing with where weekend falls into all of this, is that now you can, we've been through the history of everything from when you couldn't even mention anything about characters being gay at all be implied in subtext if it was even there at all um whereas weekends just it just happens that the main characters are gay in it i guess to start with at least and you're just dropped into the middle of this guy's weekend and you spend the weekend with him literally you're with him from what's it, about five o'clock on the friday evening through till half past four on the uh, sunday afternoon and um it so happens, as we were saying, that uh, Russell, the main character, is is gay, and um, so the story follows those kind of themes. What kind of stuff is it that you want me to say? Just talk about last night, you know, what happened, what you wanted to happen. It's for an art project. Yeah. And people can listen to it. If you make the grade, yeah. OK. Um, okay I saw you in the club and I thought you were out of my league or whatever and um, yeah we came back here didn't we and then you kissed me you said you took my shirt off I just thought that we were having a really nice time and it was lovely it was more than enough for me so um, sorry Glenn if I don't make you grade have you got a boyfriend <laughs> no I don't have a boyfriend I don't do boyfriends um... You know what it's like when you first sleep with someone you don't know? You like the blank canvas, and it gives you an opportunity to project onto that canvas who you want to be. Why can't you just understand that some people just want to be happy? Are you happy? I am absolutely fine. I'm sure you are. Don't I presume that you down. understand me. You think just because I want a relationship yeah. that you know me. No, I don't. I can, I can see it in your eyes, Glenn, that you want one too. Tomorrow. What are you going for? Uh, about two years, I think. I don't want love. What's going on? It's a guy like mate. I met him two days ago. He doesn't like me. I don't know him. <sighs> two days is nothing. And he's gone away. You have to see him when he gets back, mm -hmm. will you? He's not coming back. I don't want love. You look like you want to kiss me. I do. Go on, then. It was really interesting that the antagonist in this film was time. Because yeah. there was, like, um... There was a, there was, there was a deadline to the relationship. Um, and that's... Obviously, that's why it's called Weekend, is that mm. you know that it's going to be based around a weekend. I don't want to give too many spoilers away because I really <laughs> want people to watch this film. But there was this one scene dealing with people watching or, or noticing that two people are kissing. I think that's not too much of a spoiler. No. So, so. They, they, they have a, a kiss outside, basically. And this is one thing that really terrifies a lot of people is to show public 
display of affection and the reaction of people and this film dealt with it really really well it's not a, it's not a massive scene but it is probably the biggest scene for Russell mm. because of what he talks about earlier and he kind of overcomes something um, and you don't see who is watching them but you see a reaction and the reaction I thought was amazing and I, I don't know from your point of view how you <laughs> felt about it but because I've been in that situation I thought he dealt with it really really well yeah I mean I think it's just the whole thing that really interested me about it is, is Russell's story Russell's um, at the start, you don't know that he's gay or straight at the start. It doesn't matter. He's just going to a party. And you sort of find out that, yes, he's gay. But, again, it doesn't matter. It's just who he is. And um, the story deals with sort of his issues to do with coming out in quite an interesting way because of the point in the process... Process? Is that the right word for it? That he's at in the... He's sort of like his best friend is the only person who knows anything about it, but he's just met this guy, which is a one night stand, which is seemingly nothing, but becomes possibly more than that. And it's just, a, it's really interesting to see that aspect of someone's life looked at, because in my experience of films, which isn't particularly in gay cinema, but in a lot of films, there are gay characters and they're either in the closet or they're out. There's no, in between bit and this is looking and focusing on a character who is firmly in that in between bit which I just found really interesting because it's not something I'd seen before and but the, for, yeah. for the gay community if I say gay community for people who have been through that mm. it's a very recognisable place but I think from someone from an outsider's point of view it's an introduction to another another, as you said another place yeah it's, it's another aspect of the, that sexuality. community, that sexuality that you don't necessarily get represented in TV because I mean in, in TV particularly in soap operas there's always the kind of you know there's always a hoo-ha when there's a, when there was the first lesbian kiss on Brookside and I think it was EastEnders mm. had the first gay kiss and things like that but they always seem to be very oh this character's gay and then if they're gay they are and that's that there's the whole to and fro exploration of it is never done particularly, whereas this whole film was two yeah. hours of someone in the middle of that. Yeah. How do I deal with this kind of thing? I have I have seen, obviously, um, uh, gay experimentation in films uh, where people are just, like, experimenting and someone's turned around and said, no, you're not using me to do that. Um, or people who are having an affair with somebody but don't want anyone else to know. But... You're actually really correct because none of those characters I've seen are actually gay. They're mm. people just experimenting. Whereas, yeah, it's come to think of it, it's, I don't, I don't think I've seen anything where people are gay but not necessarily out. It's either one or the other, like yeah. off and on. There's no in between or flickering switch, kind of thing. I think it's just the way, because of the way cinema works a lot of the time now, in particularly mainstream stuff is that everything is very black and white, whether it's sexuality, whether it's whether someone's a good guy or a bad guy, whether, you know, it's a lot of black and white issues that are dealt with in, in mainstream cinema, whereas when you get into stuff like this, which is just personal drama, it works like real life does a lot more, where not everything is black and white, which, you know, is more true to life, but isn't necessarily true to what cinema tends to do. So I think that's why it's... I guess that's why it's not a mainstream film. But you know. the sex scenes in it, do you did you find the sex scenes to be okay? Would the film have been okay without them? Do you think they had any relevance to the relationship? I think they sort of made the point and did it in a way that it wasn't massively explicit. It was explicit, but it wasn't kind of mm. gratuitous like it could have been. Actually, it probably. From my recollections, it wasn't as gratuitous as some bits of Queer as Folk were when that was on TV. Oh, gosh, yeah. And um, <laughs> featuring Littlefinger from uh, Game of Thrones, so I could never probably watch Queer as Folk to re reassess it again now. Yeah. But, Did you, have uh, you seen the American Queer as Folk? No, I haven't, actually. It's, it's very, uh, um, yeah. But, I mean, it, it was on a par with 
that in explicit in terms, if maybe probably not quite as explicit as that. And I think the sex scenes in it were there because you have sex scenes in films that are grown up films about people's relationships. And to be honest, I didn't see them as being anything more or less than you'd get in another film if it was a straight couple. I, so, I personally thought they were really, really well done. Yeah. Because you, um, there was a lot of um, clo- kind of close-ups of his eyes. Um, not in kind of like, if, okay, if this was a lesbian film and some lesbian had got their hands on it, there would be acoustic guitar playing, <laughs> candles everywhere. And it just, it, they would have romanticised it way too much. And that's been a little bit judgmental, but I've seen a lot of films having that kind of like, let's dim the lights, let's have beautiful music and stuff. I was kind of, in a way, I was really jealous that this film had been made with two guys in because <laughs> I, you know, it was, it was literally one of the best films that I have seen as close to real life. Is anything, and this is including reality shows that with people where a camera will follow them around and they'll go around their gay lives doing their gay things. And this was more real life than any of those TV shows I've seen. Um, I, I mean, I think that's to do with the way it's the way it's constructed as well, and saying it's a really good film, which it is because it's constructed and it uses to coin a phrase the language of cinema to tell us things and to show that it's real life. We are, at various points, a voyeur almost on on the scenes of what's going on. We're following from a distance. We're sort of watching what's happening as if we are there. And then there are bits where we're taken right into things as sort of almost as if we're one of the characters, really. But um, it does just feel like a slice of real life. We're dropped into the middle of this guy's life. We leave it at a certain point as well. And and that's sort of that. It's it's just as if these are real characters and the acting kind of portrays that and the dialogue as well. At no point, a lot of the issues it deals with could, in other hands, be dealt with very clunkily. But I don't think this does. I think this actually does just sort of do them as if they're two people talking. And in the sex scenes as well, it's, they, to me, seemed, you know, real. They didn't seem massively over the top they didn't seem underplayed because of you know harming people's sensibilities they just seem to be well i guess that's what two guys do when they're together like that but yeah anyway go and see weekend i would suggest because it's a really good film it's a very good film mm-hmm. and i think it's available um it's out on blu-ray and dvd and such through all the usual places i just i just want to say that i thought the actors were fantastic in this mm. film yeah, definitely. Really, I mean. really good. I don't even know if they were gay or not, and it just whatever they were, they were fantastic. Yeah, it was it was just um, completely believable. Maybe because they weren't big names, because they weren't people you recognised, but it was completely believable throughout. I don't think there was a single bit where it sort of overstepped any marks of believability, which something like this could easily do. Which is my main problem with romantic comedies a lot of the time is that they just descend into ridiculousness. But this one was a romantic comedy, but it was also a sort of comedy drama at the same time. It had some very funny bits in it, as well as some very dramatic bits. 